This video explains how to perform row and column operations using the deployer package in the R programming language. So without further ado, let's jump right into the R code. As a very first step, we need to install and load the deployer package, as you can see in lines 2 and 3 of the code. I have installed the package already, so for that reason I'm just going to load it by running line 3. And now we also have to create an example data set that we can use in this video, and we can do that using the data frame function, as you can see in lines 5 to 7 of the code. So after running these lines of code, a new data frame object called mydf is appearing at the top right. And we can print this data frame to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 8. And now you can see that we have created an example data frame that contains six rows and the three columns x1, x2, and x3. Similar to that, the column x2 contains numeric values ranging from 6 to 1. And the third column x3 contains characters. Now, let's assume that we want to modify this data set using deployer syntax. Then we usually would first specify our data set, mydf, as you can see in line 10 of the code. And then afterwards, we would use the pipe operator. And the pipe operator allows you to move the output of this line as the data set to the next line. So in this case, we are moving the data frame mydf as a data input to the select function. And then within the select function, which is a deployer function, we can specify that we want to select specific columns of our data set. In this case, we want to use x1 and x3. So here, for example, after running lines 10 and 11 of the code, you can see that we have created a new data frame, which contains six rows, the six original rows, but only the columns x1 and x3. If we wanted to store the output of this in a new data set, we would have to use an assignment arrow and assign this output to a new data object. However, let's move on to the next example in lines 13 and 14 of the code. So once again, I use my df, then I specify a pipe operator, and then in this case, I want to create a new column based on our two columns x1 and x2, and this column should be called x4, and to achieve this we have to use the mutate function of the deployer package, so after running lines 13 and 14 of the code, you can see that we have returned our three original columns x1, 2, x3, and in addition to that we have created a new column, which is the sum of the columns x1 and x2. Another important task when manipulating data sets is to rename columns. And to do that, we can use the rename function. So once again, we specify our data set and the pipe operator. Then we use the rename function. And on the left side of the rename function, we always have the new column name. Then we use an equal operator. And on the right side of the equal operator, we specify the original column name. So after running lines 16 and 17 of the code, you can see that the column x1 was renamed to new x1. It's also possible to sort our data set based on numeric values in our data. So in this case, we use the arrange function and we want to sort our data ascendingly based on the values in the column x2. So after running lines 19 and 20 of the code, you can see that the rows of our data set have been reordered because in the original version of our data set, this row at the bottom was at the top with the value 6 at the top, and then the values were decreasing. So 5 was in the second row, 4 was in the third row, and so on. It's also possible to select only specific rows of our data set. And in the next example, I want to show you how to subset our data to extract only the first n rows. And in this case, we want to use the slice function to select the first three rows. And for that reason, we specify that we want to select the rows one to three. So after running these lines of code, another data set is returned. And this time we have returned only the first three rows of our data set. 
In the next example, I want to use the filter function to filter the rows of our data set conditionally. And in this case, I want to filter based on the values in the column x1. And I want to keep only those rows where the values in x1 are greater than the value 4. So after running these lines of code, you can see that another data set is returned. And in this data set, all the values in x1 are greater than the value 4. It's also possible to count rows by groups in our data set. So remember, our third column x3 contains characters. And now we can count how many rows of our data set have the different characters in the column x3. So after running these lines of code, you can see that a new data set is returned. The first column of this data set contains the three groups in our data. So in the column X3, we have the groups A, B, and C. And the second column of this output returns the count of each group. So in this case, you can see that two rows of our original data set contained the group A, two contained the group B, and two contained the group C. In the last example of this video, I want to show you that it's also possible to use the pipe operator multiple times, as you can see in lines 31 to 33 of the code. So once again, we specify our data set, myDF. Then we use a pipe operator to use these values of myDF in the group by function. So in this case, I want to group our data based on the groups in the column X3. And then I use the output of this to perform another function. In this case, I want to summarize our groups and I want to calculate a new column, which contains the mean values of the column X1 based on our groups. So after running these lines of code, you can see that another output is returned. This output contains two columns, the groups of our data in the column X3, A, B, and C. And then we have the mean values of the column X1. So for example, the mean of the column X1 in the group A is 4.5. If you would like to learn more about dplyr and how to apply dplyr functions in our programming, then you might be interested in my comprehensive online course on the topic data manipulation in R using dplyr and the tidyverse. You will find a link in the description of this video. I hope you have enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye bye.